Hi, my name is Yu Wei Wang. I'm a career researcher from the University of Arizona. Today, I'm here to guide you through a screencast that helps with organizing your data. This video is part of a series our team has created to help you build your own corpus. For the whole series, please visit our YouTube channel. After the data is collected, an essential step is organizing your data and getting the data prepared for your next step, which is automatically or manually converting the data into plain text files. The basic idea of organizing your data is to build a folder structure with a consistent logic so that you can easily locate any file with that logic. From the top to the bottom, the folder structure usually contains several layers to get to the very bottom folder which you had your data files in. The folders will be created according to your research questions. Let's take the data collected for curl as an example. The data was collected every semester from different classes taught by different instructors, and each class had many assignments throughout the semester, and each assignment may have several drafts. Among these factors, we use the semester as a folder layer because we would like to track students' progress throughout the time. We also include course titles because they represent different levels of learning. We include instructors as another folder layer, in part because this is how the data is collected, and in part because we connect the corpus materials with repository materials from the same instructors in the same semester. Finally, we would like to differentiate the various assignment types and their drafts. So we used assignment names and their draft number that the instructors provided us with. For the sake of simplification, we combined the assignment names and the draft number together as the bottom layer of folders. One more folder layer is useful to use on top of this folder structure with the name original so that you can store the collected files in their original format. Later, you may want to convert the original files into plain text, add headers, or de-identify the text. At that point, you may then create converted, encoded, or standardized folders with the same folder structure. Now let's guide down to create a folder structure according to the logic we developed above and put our original files into the corresponding folders. On the top of everything is the original folder. Below, we have the semester folder, and then the course titles, the instructors, and finally, the assignment and draft folders. Note that if we only have one instructor and a particular level of class, we still want to create a folder for that instructor so that we can keep the same folder structure and the every class folder. The final step is to check all the folders and files. Is your folder structure consistent everywhere? Have all the files been placed in the right folder? Finally, if the files are in a compressed format, the rule of thumb is to unzip them before the next step. OK, your data is ready for converting now. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any feedback, we'd love to hear from you in the comments. Please visit our website, writecurl.org, to learn more about the corpus and repository of writing, including links to other writing research resources we've built. Thanks again.